All right, Jan Brewer vetoed the uh, Arizona legislation that was put on her desk. The bill would basically allow businesses to refuse service uh, to people who they had a religious issue with. Wayne Wallingford joins us, uh, state senator from Cape Girardeau. Uh, Mr. Wallingford, you um, introduced a similar, very similar, unlike, I mean, how similar was the bill you introduced into the Senate? Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Yes, it, it was loosely based on the Arizona law, but the Arizona Arizona law goes a lot further. I tried to keep my bill simple where the Arizona law goes into non-religious assemblies or institutions, political subdivisions, religion, neutral zoning standards, and unreasonable burdens and that. So I, I kind of avoided that and just wanted to keep it simple. And uh, what mine does, it merely amends the existing Religious Freedom Restoration Act, which people refer to as RIFA. And that has actually been on the books at the state level here in Missouri since 2003. That's when our current lieutenant governor, Peter Kinder, was a state senator. And he introduced a bill then, Senate Bill 12. And then also it's uh, based at the national level on that RIFRA that we've had since 1993. So basically, my bill is simple, a common sense bill to ensure that individuals can claim the protections of this law and, of course, their First Amendment rights and lawsuits. Here's what I don't understand, State Senator Wayne Wallingford. Last year, it's been reported that you voted for a bill that would uh, prohibit a discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation in the workplace, correct? That is correct. Okay, so, 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 in other words, hold on a second. In, in other words, you are in, you are, uh, you feel people have a right to, uh, uh, gays have a right to work in the workplace, and business owners don't have a right to fire them, but businesses have a right to not serve them. Well, first of all, you have to remember that under my bill, uh, the, you know, if they, act or refusal to act, they have to prove that it's substantially motivated by a sincere religious belief. And they can still be taken to court, and they would have to prove in court that they had a sincere religious belief if someone took them into a civil court. In fact, my bill actually even says nothing in this bill shall be construed to establish a defense to a civil action or criminal prosecution based on the laws involving discrimination. So uh, they can still be taken into court, and the burden of proof is on them to show that, well, this was a sincere religious belief, and then the courts would have to decide the merits of that. Um, okay, so in other words, they would have to be consistent, right? They would have to... Um, choose not to serve all homosexuals, right? They couldn't that's, just pick and choose. No, that's correct. Uh, they can't uh, pick and choose winners and losers. They have to be consistent. So they would if probably they, have to ask every single one, are you a lesbian, are you a homosexual? Because you just you know, can't tell I, by I looking at somebody. You know, I know probably what you might be referring to. I think it was in New Mexico where a photographer refused uh, a couple that wanted to have uh, you know them take the pictures. I think that was the one. There's been others about floors and cake bakers. But regardless, yeah, I don't know if businesses proactively ask what you know your right. But if you're going to if you're if you're going to administer it fairly and completely, you would have to ask, right? Let me ask you this well, question, yeah. State Senator. There sure. there there are people who have. Uh, like the Westboro uh, Baptist Church, they have issues with interracial marriage. Uh, uh -huh. w would they be protected under this law? Well, first of all, you want to remember that my bill doesn't even have the word marriage in it or, uh, you know, gender. It's just about the protection of First Amendment rights. Sure. So if the Westboro, uh, if the Westboro Baptist Church, if, uh, if somebody who believes in that religion— uh, owns a dry cleaner, can they uh, discriminate against a interracial uh, couple because it's against their religious beliefs? Well, my law doesn't allow, or my bill doesn't allow for discrimination. Uh, in fact, it's against discrimination, but... Can they deny to... service on the yeah. basis of interracial marriage if it's against their personal and religious beliefs? 
they they would have to prove that in court. They can't just do it arbitrarily and go on their merry way. And I think the Kansas bill was very broad and said so they could uh, you know religious uh, you know beliefs trump everything. My bill doesn't allow that. Religious beliefs doesn't trump everything. It has to be a compelling and motivated sincere religious belief right but it it, has to be proved in court sure but but if the westboro baptist member is truly believes or is 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 consistent in that interracial marriage is against their religious beliefs your bill would allow them the right to deny them service well if they denied them service and the people they denied uh, didn't feel that they were justifying being denied, and they were be- being discriminated against, then that party that believes they've been discriminated against could take that business to court and say, I was unjustly discriminated against, and uh, the court would decide. Uh, so what, know, does your, what does your bill actually do, then, to protect the business owner and their religious freedom? What does it do to protect yeah, their if, religious freedom? If if you keep on have to going to court, what what does your bill actually do to protect the the freedom of the business owner? Well, the the business person must prove that uh, their religious freedom is genuine, and they must prove that the burden on their belief is substantial, and. Uh, you know, and if the if the government got involved in the case, then uh, you know they would have to show that the government interest is compelling. So, all right, let's 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 l- look at this the other way. Wayne Wallingford is our guest, He's state senator from Cape Girardeau. He just introduced a bill uh, similar, loosely based on the Arizona uh, law that that's getting so much attention. Um, in this state, uh, homosexuals are not allowed to marry. Correct? Yes. Okay. Do you feel, because there are many mainstream churches that allow uh, marriages and, and have marriage c- ceremonies every single day, is the state infringing on those religious beliefs, not allowing them to be married and recognized by the state? Well, you know, my bill actually just, clar- I tried to keep it simple where it clarifies Missouri's uh, Religious Freedom Restoration Act that is, applies in Missouri uh, to businesses as well as citizens, and it my bill does not permit discrimination, and it does not endorse discrimination. It just makes clear that if the government passes a law or adopts a regulation uh, that substantially burdens a business person's religion or belief, he or she can have a day in court. It's all about having a day in court. It will be up to the court to decide if the burden is truly substantial. Is it an, un- the- is it an unfair burden to ask a florist to deliver flowers to a gay wedding? Is that an undue burden? Well... Uh, I'm not an attorney, and and I'm certainly not a judge, so I would leave that up to the courts. They really have, uh, you know, more influence. Uh, They study those things, uh, you know, question the people that involved and are not influenced by, you know, uh, know, special interest groups, and they're kind of removed from, from the situation. So I think courts can generally devote more time to the questions like you just gave me, uh, hear the evidence from both sides. I don't understand, State mm-hmm. Senator. Yeah. Why? Why do you, every question I keep asking you about the courts and the judges? You're the state legislature. Republicans compl- complain constantly about activist judges. You can write the law. You can write it so that the judges aren't activists. In this case, you're writing a law so that the judges will become the most activist judges out there. Well, I don't know if what you just said is. Uh, Entirely based on fact, it's uh, certainly uh, an opinion you're entitled to. Uh, I leave the courts to themselves, and uh, you know if they're activist judges or not activist judges, that's not much that I can do. Well, about. You keep saying it is up to the courts. It's up to the courts. Yes, it's up to the court. So the the, the judge can sit there and just arbitrarily decide. Well, hopefully, judges don't just arbitrarily do anything. They have a you know, a code of law that they have to go by and apply it evenly to all groups, uh, you know, all genders, all races, all sexual orientations, all ages. And I would certainly hope that they would abide by the law when they review each case. Yeah, I'm more confused now than I was when we started this conversation. Uh, State Senator Wayne Wallingford, what are the chances of this bill getting a hearing and getting out of committee and getting on the floor and getting on the governor's desk? Well, you know, we're getting late in the session. We're going to be going on spring break here in the middle of 
March, and uh, this bill hasn't been referred to a committee yet. You know, this bill is number uh, Senate Bill 916, and it's way down on the list. We're up over 950 bills and has to be referred to a committee. It'll be tough to get it through the whole process because not only it has to be sent to a Senate committee, then debated on the Senate floor, then sent to a House committee, and then debated on the House floor. And if the House makes a change to it, it has to come back to the Senate. So it can get pretty cumbersome. But at least I wanted to get the conversations going, people weighing in on what uh, they think is right. Well, you definitely got the conversation going. Missouri Missouri State Senator Wayne Wallingford from uh, Cape Girardeau. Sir, thank you very much for your time, and, and thanks for getting up early. You know, you're entirely welcome. Thank you. Got, you. you got it. 631 here, Big 550 KTR.